Good evening, everyone. Before we get started, if I could ask everyone to please put your phones on silence, that would be great. So welcome to Meet the Next Mayor. I'm Suzette Munley, the president of the Center City Business Association. We are excited to bring you this opportunity to hear from our candidates up close and personal and have your voices heard and your questions answered. We are dedicated to the economic success of the entire Philadelphia region, and we know that it is driven by the center city business community. Right now, the stakes could not be higher for Philadelphia. With so much to be done, we need a mayor who is a strong leader, someone with the guts to do what needs to be done, someone who leads with heart, someone with a clear vision and a positive approach. We know she, or he is on this stage now, and we hope after tonight's conversation about business and the quality of life in Center City that you will be able to make an informed decision about who gets your vote. And before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge our women candidates in honor of International Women's Day, which is today. <laughs> It is a global day celebrating the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. We would like to thank 6ABC for streaming tonight's event and enabling Rick Williams to moderate. We also thank citizens for their presenting sponsorship and continuous support of the association. Now to say a few words and introduce our moderator, please welcome Dan Fitzpatrick, president of Citizens Bank Mid-Atlantic Region. She said, thank you so much for your leadership of the Center City Business Association. We are a proud member. And again, we're so proud because this represents so many of the small businesses in our Center City District that are many are women owned, entrepreneurial, black and brown entrepreneurs that that really are who make this organization up, which makes it so important. And of course, uh, from the citizens perspective, uh, we have the most branches in the city of Philadelphia. We have the most branches in all the neighborhoods of Philadelphia. So from that perspective, you see the new buildings, we're, the new branches we're opening in the center of town. I can assure you as somebody who is a native of Philadelphia, I live and work in the city. Citizens Bank is fully vested in Philadelphia and bullish on Philadelphia, but it is about leadership, right? So again, we pride ourselves on civic engagement, and one of the big things we do is try to convene uh, and bring people together on the important topics facing our city. One of the things I'm uh, the privilege of is chairing our Workforce Investment Board for Philadelphia County. And again, what we see is our strength in this city is our great population, our young, diverse young population, and we have thousands of uh, great high-paying careers that go unfilled right now. And the opportunity that we have as a city and a region is really immense, but it does take great leadership to make that happen. So again, while the city is returning to pre-pandemic sense of normalcy, we still face many challenges, including crime, poverty, the return of businesses and office workers to Center City, and the purpose of our gathering here tonight. It's important to note that this all stops, or should I say begins, with the mayor of and his or her administration. Tonight, we're heal directly from those running for mayor and get one step closer to understanding our options for Philadelphia's top job. So getting this moving now, it is truly an honor to introduce our moderator. Like me, many of you have been watching Rick Williams on Channel 6 Action News for over 25 years. And while Rick was born in New York, he is a true Philadelphian. And uh, Rick has covered so many uh, variety of big events and interviewed presidents, politicians, celebrities, and one of his favorite assignments, of course, is hosting the 6ABC Thanksgiving Day Parade. Rick, thank you for doing that. We all enjoy that. So again, let's give our thanks that he's here tonight to help us embrace our differences and educate ourselves on the upcoming election. So Rick's full biography and links to all the candidates' websites are available in the program. So please join me in welcoming Rick Williams and our mayoral candidates. Thank you, Dan. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for that introduction. It's almost like I wrote that. It was just a... Um, I am so happy to be here and be a part of a very important event tonight. Normally I'm on the air right now doing the news, but um, this is... This is just as important, being here. So thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing me to moderate. 
Uh, I want to just do a quick shout out to some of my colleagues, Nikki Hawkins, our Vice President of Community Affairs. Nikki is here. Uh, and I think I saw my boss, uh, President and General Manager Bernie Prezenica sitting back there. Um, so, and a couple of our tech people from 6ABC as well. So um, it's a team effort. And um, without further ado, let's get started so we can have some time to um, socialize and hobnob before the evening is over. And of course, I put my glasses on. I don't wear these on the air because the teleprompter is like right here. <laughs> but if the teleprompter ever goes on the blink, you're going to see Steve Urkel doing the news. So just uh, <laughs> so thank you. Welcome everyone here at WHYY in Center City and to our viewers at home. I want to say thank you to the Center City Business Association for putting this forum together. The Center City Business Association has gathered questions from the business community for the candidates to answer and share their vision for a better city. So the big story tonight is the amazing candidates on stage. We will hear their plans to help improve Philadelphia, and make it a great place to live and work, and to open, grow, and sustain a business. In other words, we are here tonight to meet the next mayor. So without further ado, let us introduce the candidates who are here this evening, and I will introduce them in alphabetical order by their last name. First off is Jeff Brown, followed by Jimmy DeLeon, Alan Dom, Derek Green, Helen Gim, David O, Sherelle Parker, Maria Quinonia Sanchez, and last but not least, Rebecca Reinhardt. How about a big hand for our candidates tonight? And before we begin, let me explain the structure of this evening's forum. Every candidate who has announced their run for mayor was invited to participate in this forum tonight. Not everyone is here, but those who are, we thank them for being here, and we look forward for a very insightful evening. We also want you to meet the candidates and hear their ideas for a better future for businesses in Philadelphia. This is not a debate, per se, but an opportunity for the candidates to have the time to share their ideas, their complex ideas for Philadelphia. The time allotted will be solely dedicated to this purpose. The Center City Business Association has collected questions from business leaders all over the city, including their membership, their board, local business speakers who appear at Center City Business Association programs throughout the year, and of course, members of tonight's audience like yourselves. They represent a wide range of business people who work and in some cases live in the city. So I will, I will announce the time allotted for the answers as I ask each question. The clock will count down to zero at which each candidate must end their answer. If they're still talking, I will interrupt you as politely as I can. And following the program, which we expect to end around 7.30, there will be time to network before the evening ends at eight o'clock. So let's get to it with our first question to all of the candidates, and we will begin, the first answer will come from Jeff Brown. And the question is this, in the form of a headlines or simple bulletin points, because you only have 30 seconds, what are your three top priorities to attract and retain successful businesses in Philadelphia as mayor? Once again, what are your top three priorities to attract and retain successful businesses in Philadelphia as mayor. You have 30 seconds. Jeff, you were first. Number one, this has to be a safe city, um, and you need strong leadership for that. Um, we're going to make that happen. Number two, um, we have to stop vilifying businesses. We have to simplify um, what it takes to be a business in Philadelphia, and we need to help businesses, especially small businesses, grow. And to be honest with you, one of the most important things and all our problems relate to poverty even business problems, because there's tons of unemployed people that should be working in our businesses, and they're not, because they're not prepared to work. I'm going to fix that. Thank you, Jeff. Jimmy, same question. So the first aspect is that the city has to be a safe city. So my number one goal as mayor would be to reduce gun violence and reverse generational poverty. The second aspect is that I would fund, I would like to see funded in this city, uh, I would like this city to become a hub 
for black and brown initial public offerings, okay? I've, I've seen that, I've done that at, at, at Wharton, and I would like to have that here in Philadelphia. The third thing is that I would like to have Jimmy, we are out of time. Thank you. Okay. Alan, same question. Thanks, Rick. Uh, I would say number one issue is violence, but really the main issue is leadership, because leadership can help with all these issues. Violence is number one. Number two is education, what we can do in our schools. Number three is taxes, so we can attract more employers and more employment and more entrepreneurs. And I will say this. Thank God for Center City District for all of you, because they have really, really helped the city. And Paul Levy is owed a huge debt of gratitude, really. Thank you, Alan. Derek, 30 seconds. Well, the first issue that we have to do is make the city a much safer city. And that's why I released a public safety plan. As a former prosecutor, I know we have to reduce shootings in the city through presence, accountability, opportunity, investment. We also have to reduce taxes in the city. I've also been a small business owner, so I understand the impact taxes have done to our city, to our small businesses, especially in Center City. And that's something that I've addressed as a member of city council. And then the last thing, we have to make it easier to do business in the city of Philadelphia. There's too many regulations, too many problems, and too many challenges to run Thank a business you, in our city. Helen Gibb, 30 seconds. Um, so Center City's vibrancy relies on the fact that it has a vibrant residential base that allows small businesses to access um, not just commuters and people who come in, but the people who actually make our city great, which is our residents. So my vision is to really have a city that is invested in a vibrant residential and business-friendly corridor. That means I'm going to care very much about education, to keep families here and make this best place in the country to raise a family and to build a future. Second, cleanliness matters. Um, there's no question that having a cleaner, brighter Philadelphia is going to make all the change Thank and you, of course, Helen. safety. Let's move to there, our, in the back there. And David, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, first, uh, the police will be deployed. They will be engaged. They will be active. They will enforce all criminal and public safety laws. They will be visible in the communities that are hotspots. They will be in Center City. They will be in the gathering places. Secondly, the Commerce Department will have an international arm that will seek investment, that will seek uh, uh, employers and investors to come to our city. And then finally, there will be tax reform for a competitive city on a global and national basis. Thank you, David. Sherelle, you have 30 seconds. We will attract and retain businesses in the city of Philadelphia by ensuring that we are the safest and the cleanest big city in the nation that provides access to economic opportunity for all. We will grow the economic pie by becoming attractive and allowing people to have hope and pride in our city, but we will get our own house in order and use every tool in the toolbox to get it done. Thank you, Sherelle. Maria, 30 seconds. Thank you. As the author to most of the business tax reform initiatives that are on the books that have proven what I know to be that we have to be a competitive business sector by supporting small businesses in particular. So I would continue the tax reform. I encourage all of you to go for, to mariaforphilly.com so that you can see what we've done, $100,000 exemption, uh, single sales factor for manufacturing. I will ensure that community college becomes our workforce economic engine. We will send high school students for returning citizens and Thank folks you, who need upskilling so that we can be competitive. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And finally, Rebecca. As mayor, I will make our city safer and also address the feeling of law lawlessness that's occurring on our streets right now. I think we need a course correction so that there are consequences while we proceed with criminal justice reform. Both are possible. As mayor, I will cut down on the red tape of city government. I know from being in two administrations how the departments are very siloed. I will appoint a senior official to help businesses navigate the city. And I will Thank also you, cut taxes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to question number two. And Rebecca, you will start and we'll work backwards so that the same person doesn't answer. Uh, go first the entire time. And here is question number two to all of the candidates. This time you'll have two minutes. What specific steps would you take to address the priorities that you just mentioned? And how will the public measure the success of this plan? So once again, what specific steps would you take to address the priorities that you just mentioned? And how will the public measure the success of this plan? Rebecca, we'll start with you and you have two minutes. So first, as mayor, to make our city safer, 
I will take immediate action. I put forth a six-point plan uh, that's on my website, and I'll speak to a few of those items right now. First of all, immediately I would declare a citywide emergency, activate the emergency operation center to coordinate the operating department response. Second, I would implement the proven strategies that have worked to combat gun violence. I have reported on these since 2019 as city controller. These are strategies that have worked in Oakland and New Orleans that reduced homicides by 50% in Oakland. This is what we need to do here. And as mayor, I will work to crack down on illegal guns um, and also make changes to policing. On the other items, number two, uh, the item was cutting down on red tape. I released a business plan. Uh, this is a really important item for business growth and retention, and I'm sure all of you uh, deal with the city and uh, deal with frustrations with the city on a regular basis. Uh, and as mayor, I would work to improve the ease of doing business, really breaking down the silos uh, of city government to make it much easier for small business. I'll have that senior official that will do that uh, in the mayor's office. And also, we do need to look at our tax structure. We need to continue to lower the wage tax. We need to lower the business income and receipts tax to spur sp small business and entrepreneurship. We're one of the only cities in the country, one of four, that taxes both gross receipts and net profits. We need to make changes, and I think we can do that and spur the growth of our city uh, and really make it uh, work for everyone here. Thank Th you. Thank you, Rebecca. Maria, same question. Thank you so very much. Again, I, I encourage folks to look at the website. We are the only candidate that's running and saying that public safety is around operating departments. It is about a citywide camera program. It is about infrastructure. Is it about cleanliness? It's about stabilizing vacancy that we have in the city of Philadelphia. The police reform are necessary, but what is going to make our city feel safe and look safe is our cleanliness, LED lighting, all of the things we know, the data sets that prove um, that deter violence. And the core, center city core is key to that. We don't have our own city, center city camera program. So I would institute that immediately on building out the infrastructure. I will do a one-stop business center. We have 157 steps to open a food establishment in the city of Philadelphia. Ridiculous unnecessary. I would make sure that the water department, the streets department, all the single departments, you have one place to go and you can get through, whether it's a barber shop, whether it's a food establishment, whatever it is that you need to set up in the city of Philadelphia. We need to continue to be tax, comp tax competitiveness. Again, I have led the charge. I have reduced more business taxes for small business than everybody else. Why? Because I listened. I listened to the businesses and I understood what it is to be competitive. I would eliminate the double taxation that we do on your first year of operation. The city should not be cash flowing itself on small and starting businesses. And then finally, community college is key. We have to have a workforce that can meet the needs of today's business environment. And I would make sure that we put more high school students at community college, that we provide free community college to returning citizens, and that we upskill the training that all folks could have so that we can meet the needs of the growing industry, biotech, tech, um, advanced manufacturing in the city of Philadelphia. We can do this. There's nothing wrong in Philadelphia we can't fix if we work together. Thank you, Maria. Sherelle, you have two minutes. A Parker administration will ensure that we have the safest and cleanest big city in the nation by implementing a plan that I offered before there was a mayoral poll to tell me that public safety was the number one priority on the hearts and minds of Philadelphians. And while others were shouting, defund the police, I introduced a comprehensive plan that called for putting 300 police officers proactively engaged in community policing 
with zero tolerance for any misuse and or abuse of authority, but getting to know the people that they were sworn to protect and serve. We will continue to embrace policing strategies like Operation Pinpoint and GVI, but we will also make sure our police department and DA's office has access to the technical equipment forensics that they need to actually solve crime. So we'll make people believers by showing them. We will make it cleaner by putting on steroids a plan that I copied from the Center City District. It's called PHLTCB, paying residents $15 an hour, giving them soft skills training so that they can clean commercial quarters and neighborhoods across the city. And finally, access to economic opportunity. We deliver public education like we're still in an agrarian society. We are not going to work the farms, nor are most of our kids in Martha's Vineyard or at the shore during the summer. We have to measure training with the building trades. So our challenge with affordable housing and preserving existing is being done and completed and improved by our Philadelphia students, those who are unemployed and underemployed. Schools should open as early as 7.30, close the minimum by 6 p.m. so that children can have access to every industry that is growing in the city of Philadelphia. We should be training right within our public amenities. Thank you, Sherelle. David, you have two minutes. Yeah, the biggest problem in this city is that people are afraid. They're afraid to go to work. They're afraid to come into the city. They're afraid to walk outside. Uh, they're afraid when their children go to school. They're afraid when their children recreate. It's, it's a huge problem. And we will not grow as a city under those circumstances. There is no other way to stop violent crime. What I mean is people intent on shooting other people, murdering other people, hurting other people other than policing. You will not do it without police. The police have to be visible. Yes, they have to be well trained. Reforms are important, but technology is important as well. The police need better information. They need to let technology do the work for them. Uh, there are many things that we allow to occur in this city. I think they're failed policies. They send a very bad message. So I think the first thing that a mayor should do is send a very clear message so we can speed up this process of making the city safe. That message is you will not ride your ATVs, your dirt bikes, bring your illegal weapons into this city. You will not come from Chester County, Berks County to Kensington Avenue. You will not do all these things in our city. You will not live in our subway system, defecating in public, having sex acts, carrying knives. None of those, none of those things are acceptable and they will not be tolerated. The best thing you can do to prevent those would-be perpetrators and those would-be victims is to send a clear message that the laws will be enforced. In terms of what we should be doing, there's a limited opportunity in this city, just geographically, and COVID has made it worse. We need to look globally to get more investment, to look at other countries that actually have surpassed us in areas like filmmaking, music, those type of things. Those were things that we used to own in this country. We don't anymore. Uh, it's very competitive, but there are new opportunities, new ways for Philadelphia to get on the map in the creative arts economy, the sciences, technology, things that young people love, and they love to be involved with all of these things, fashion, music, filmmaking, those type of economic opportunities, but there has to be construction. Thank you, be David. Thank you. Helen, you have two minutes. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. So again, as I said, what I love so much about the Center City area and business district is that it's got a vibrant uh, residential base that, that is the backbone of so much of the customers and clients and people who kept uh, the city going. Um, and so that's why the most important thing is to zero in on the things that make our city the most livable place in the country. Um, I really do believe that the most desirable city in America will be the most livable one. So I've talked about focusing in on cleanliness, about what it looks like um, to push forward when I was on council, a $30 million uh, just services campaign that really focused in on cleaning up our city streets, on lighting up and brightening up areas. I've made a commitment to separate out a separate division of sanitation and a separate division of transit, in part because I really need our commissioners to focus in on cleaning up and managing waste here in Philadelphia. I also want to be clear that cleaning up the city means that it's also about vacancies, that vacant storefronts um, 
drag down corridors. Um, they create a sense of abandonment and neglect. So we want to brighten those up, whether we're doing new storefronts or other things. Um, I've made it a mission to focus in on education. I'm not here to start a job. Uh, I am here to finish a job I started 30 years ago when I was a mom taking on some of Philadelphia's toughest fights. And one of them is on modernizing our schools inside and out so they become these vibrant places and we can anchor our young people, keep our families here with the promise that this city is out to educate our, our, our communities and our young people um, and to take care of their parents as well. Um, and then lastly, I want to talk about safety because this is a very important area where it's not just about edicts and whether we follow laws or not. We need an all hands on deck coordinated effort. It's why I've called on uh, gun violence to be cleared, a clear state of emergency, so we can actually coordinate the mayor's office with SEPTA, with our school systems, um, with, with uh, multiple different agencies, so we can get an approach towards that and make sure that we decentralize so communication. Thank you, Helen is brought back to communities uh, through our district. Derek, you have two minutes. So I talked about three priorities, public safety, tax reform, and making it easier to do business in the city of Philadelphia. Now, as a former assistant district attorney who was also once racially profiled while leaving the city, I know specifically how we should address those issues. Now, I pledge in my public safety program, we're going to reduce shootings by 25%. We're going to do it through presence, accountability, opportunity, and investment. When I say presence, we don't have enough police officers in our city. As small business owners, you know because you don't see police in Center City like we used to. So when I talk about presence, we're going to aggressively bring in police officers using hiring bonuses. This is something I've seen in Seattle, which went from defund the police to now doing a $50,000 hiring bonus, as well as Newark and Baltimore. And go to our local colleges and universities and bring police into the city of Philadelphia. Accountability. As a former prosecutor, I remember when the U.S. Attorney's Office used to be in our police districts. We're going to bring that back and have real partnership with all our criminal justice partners to really get after those who illegally possess guns and hold them accountable. Opportunity investment, we're going to give opportunities for people in our city to participate in all the great things we have as a city, to grow small businesses like the small business I used to have and as many of small business owners have in this city. But we're also going to address wage tax reform. I did that as a member of city council. I introduced a plan that reduced wage taxes and also net income portion of business income receipt tax to the lowest level we've seen in 50 years. And finally, making it easier to do business in the city of Philadelphia. I've done that. I was a co-chair of our special committee on regulatory reform and review, working with Rob Wonderling and former Commerce Director Harold Epps, taking out regulation and laws that just antiquated, that go back to the 1930s and 1940s. These are the type of things we need to do. This is my track record, which I've done as a member of city council, and as mayor, I'll do it even more because I understand these issues because I've been a small business owner, I've been a prosecutor, and that's how we'll make the city a safer place. Thank you, Derek. Alan, you have two minutes. Thank you, Rick. Um, I talked about really four things. I want to talk about leadership real briefly. Uh, Rick, I just got to say that you've done an amazing job filling the roles of Jim Garner. That's tremendous leadership, so thank oh, you for that. Thank, thank you, Alan. Really. Uh, yeah, he deserves it. Oh, take please. my time. That's okay. Alan, lucky for you, I live in New Jersey, but thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but just think about that. How thank you. We, 40 years, I think, Jim was on. Anyway, we have tremendous leaders in this room that I could take a lot of lessons from, whether it's Dan Fitzpatrick, Ben, Suzette, or I see Paul Stanky, Preservation Alliance. Tremendous leadership. And so that's what's needed. You need a leader to bring people together, whether they're Democrats or Republicans or working party, it doesn't matter. We need to bring Philadelphians together. And I look at everybody as a Philadelphian, and I will be the mayor for every person. Day one, I will declare a crime emergency in the city, public health emergency in Kensington. I have a 10-point public safety plan on my website, votedom.com, that focuses on getting off the streets the most violent people, prosecuting illegal gun violations. And you know, in Center City in 2022, 70% of the retail theft was caused by less than 30 people. We have to prosecute retail theft. There's more, but for time's sake, education's important. I'll put mandatory teaching of financial literacy, technology, and entrepreneurship in K through 12 schools, allow students in 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, go to school four days a week, work one day a week at a job, get credit, get paid, something I did. And for adults, I'll put 25 locations around the city in rec centers, churches, and schools where we teach adults, and we'll need citizens to help us, Seven to nine o'clock at night, financial literacy, technology, and entrepreneurship. The key out of this is entrepreneurship. On the area of taxes, we have an issue. Our taxes are too high. New York City's the highest at 16.2, Philadelphia's 15.9, local and state combined, 
Third highest in the country, California at 8.8. .8. Chicago, seven, we're at 15.9. Tell me why you're staying here to open up, expand a business, or grow one, or come here. We need to adjust those taxes. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Jimmy, you have two minutes. So remember what I said initially, that in order for business to prosper in Philadelphia, we have to reduce the gun violence and crime, and we have to overturn generational poverty. So on my first day as mayor, I would institute what's known as the local incident management system. And I would do this by declaring that all gun shootings in Philadelphia are dramatic incidents. Now, the LIMS program is a, a set of processes and procedures that enables the city government to, to combat gun violence by enabling the necessary responders to manage more effectively the root causes of gun violence. Now, the first thing I would do was inactivate the court. Um, if every single plan that you've seen put forward by any administration or organization in this city has not involved the court system, well, the court system is a necessary component. So the first thing is that every person arrested for gun violence, straw purchases, having a gun in Philadelphia, domestic violence, would get a social media ban. Now, what we, what we found out is that Social media is one of the driving forces for gun violence in the city. It's what took place down in Roxborough. It's what took place at West Philly um, today. It's what took place at Overbrook High School twice um, over the last um, 80 days. So we also are going to give um, to all those arrested for those particular cases on a case-by-case on a -case basis a ban as, as to um, where they can come and go. They will only be able to go outside um, uh, 6 in the morning, and they'd have to be back in at 9 at night. Now, what all this does, it gives a, a less cluttered field for the police to do their own gun violence initiatives by taking people off of social media and taking people off of the street. The other part is that we're going to give these people that Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you very much. And our final answer for question number two. Jeff, you have two minutes. Hi. Uh Things are really bad. I think we all know that. And we need a much more substantial change in this city. And um, when we're making that change, let's think about this. This is a 26,000 person, mostly unionized workforce. We hire people for this job. Never did anything like that before. That's been my whole life. That's all I've done, run things with the unionized workforce. There's three strategic areas I want to dig into. And we'll talk about measurements. One, one is structural poverty. My plan for structural poverty is we need to reform K through 12 education. We designed it almost exclusively to send kids to college, even though in Philadelphia, more than 75% of our kids don't go to college, haven't for decades. We, we need a career in technical education for most of our young people so they can get a good paying job. We should measure our success on their starting salary, not their SAT scores for that 75%. The second is if we miss them in school, we need to help them in the workforce system. Workforce is something I've done a lot of. I've hired 60,000 people in my career as a grocer, a lot of them from the neighborhoods and their first job. I see them all over the city. I've done the, the same kind of thing in Philadelphia Youth Network. I've trained 200,000 young people from the neighborhoods where I gave them their first internship or work with them to teach them how to work. These are the kinds of things in the workforce system that take young people and adults out of poverty. And finally, it's creating opportunity. It's what we invest in. What we have to understand is for businesses to succeed and for us to succeed as a city, we need to invest in getting people out of poverty. We're so upside down in this city. We're the biggest poor city in the country. We don't have money because so many people need help and not enough money could pay. And that's why that has to be our most important objective. And we know it leads to crime. So if I move to crime, we're short 1,500 officers. In the last three, year, three years, very few officers Th thank were hired you, Jeff. Thank, thank you, you very much. Moving on to question three. Now, a lot of you already mentioned crime, so we will forgive you if your answers are redundant, but it is a very important topic when it comes to center city businesses. In fact, the challenges that we hear the most from businesses and merchants and business owners has to do with crime, whether it's aggressive panhandling, or robberies, um, violence, unfortunately, or as simple as trash and littering. 
The question is, and David, we'll begin with you in the second round and work backwards. The question is, select one of these challenges as far as crime is concerned and share your specific plan for fighting it. You'll have two minutes, David. One of the big problems that we have in this city, um, neighborhoods where we have juveniles, very young people with semi-automatic weapons, extended magazines, hunting other 15-year-olds driving around the neighborhood, and when they see them, they shoot them like 12, 18 times. We know that they drive around the neighborhoods. From those neighborhoods, they're coming out to do home invasion robberies, they're going to our universities, and you see them in Center City. Uh, you cannot really take them lightly, nor is it a good thing to, to be lenient with them because you're encouraging them to go down a very wrong path. All of the temptations to, to commit crimes and do bad actions have bad consequences, not only for the victim, but for the young people themselves. Center City is a place where it's an economic hub for us. We need to ensure everyone is safe. They feel good. We need the tourists. We need the workers. We need people to go to our restaurants, to, to, to go out at night. That's very important for our economy. And it's important for investment as well. There has to be lighting. There has to be enforcement of all criminal laws. There has to be enforcement of littering and dumping. There cannot be situations where cars are doing donuts around police cars or motorcycles are doing that type of thing. That is sending a terrible message. Um, I will have the police out. They will have the technology to enforce those laws. There will be no um, leniency towards that type of thing. Now, that doesn't mean you need to have harsh punishments. It means you have to enforce the law, whether it is in the subway system, on the public transportation platforms, or around Center City itself. Thank you, David. Sherelle, you have two minutes. Yes, I want to talk about a holistic approach to addressing crime and quality of life in the city of Philadelphia. The reason why so many Philadelphians have lost hope in government is because they don't get an opportunity to see their tax dollars at work in their neighborhood. And just like you heard me mention the idea that I stole from Paul Levy in the Center City District as it relates to the cleaning ambassadors, we have to demonstrate that that can happen happen in neighborhoods across the city. I am unapologetic about affirming that I will use every tool in our toolbox to address violence and public safety in the city of Philadelphia. And that is holistic. It is quality of life. It is cleanliness. It is lighting. It is storefronts. Uh, it is making sure that people in neighborhoods have access to opportunity so that they can get off of the poverty hand will and get on a path to self-sufficiency. If you want to see crime reduced in the city of Philadelphia, give me the opportunity to earn a living wage, health care on my own, and retirement security so that I can take care of myself and my family and not have to rely on government. We can't create more jobs like that or encourage more private businesses to come to Philadelphia if we can't address safety and we we can't address cleanliness, nor can we create an environment where we look at the public sector and private sector if it's us versus them. We need a collaborative approach that requires experience, intergovernmental experience. Josh Shapiro and 11 plus billion dollars in a surplus from Harrisburg. Philadelphia, 660 million dollar plus fund balance for the first Commonwealth Court decision, additional way to drive funding to public education we can get it done and address violence now. Thank you, Sherelle. Maria, you have two minutes. Thank you. Again, I encourage folks to go to mariaforphilly.com. Um, again, we lead this discussion around infrastructure. Safety starts with cameras. It starts with lighting. It starts with cleanliness, all the data sets that we know. But we have to be smarter about how we do policing. Look, under the Nutter administration, the Justice Department came down and there was a great report that was written that talked about technology, forensics, all the things we're finally embracing around smart policing in the city of Philadelphia. Ten years ago, I gave my colleagues a book called Date from David Kennedy, Stop, Don't Shoot. We know the next perpetrator and we know the next victim and we almost know where they're going to commit the crime. And so focused deterrence is about being smart about when the, where the next incident is going to 
to happen, particularly in the geography of, of downtown. I think it's hugely important that we understand that and, and part of what I'm calling on the, on the public safety reform, we need a public dashboard. We need to be honest with you about what's going on in the public defender's office, what's going on in the, in the parole department, what's going on in the court system when we have 300 homicide delay, cases delayed, what is going on in the police department, what is going on in the prison. You deserve to know the truth. You deserve to know our deployment strategy. Why aren't officers out deploying and babysitting construction sites? This is about managing, right? Managing what we know it's going to happen, right? Because we know all the data sets that lead um, uh, to those issues. But focus deterrence is smart policing. You know why? Because we work with state and federal partners. And when we move that 10% of the people committing 90% of the crime to their state and federal jurisdictions, we don't pay for that. That. We do not pay for that. So this is about effectiveness, efficiency, collaboration, so that we can make our city safe. So again, this is leadership. I would, as mayor, convene the first year of that public dashboard. I would be honest and transparent about it and ask for the investments we need. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Rebecca, your thoughts? I'm going to focus on gun violence and the feeling of lawlessness. Uh, on our city streets. As city controller, I did work beyond the financial audits. Starting in 2019, when Philadelphia's gun violence rates were going up while other cities were going down, I started doing work on gun violence, looking at what works in other cities and urging the mayor to implement those strategies here. What works and what I would do as mayor, in addition to getting more police on the street and cracking down on illegal guns, is specific strategies such as Oakland and New Orleans. These are strategies that focus on the few hundred young individuals most likely to shoot or be shot and offer them a way out of that lifestyle. Uh, the majority take that way out and consequences if they don't take it. We need to do that here at scale across the whole city. I've been urging the mayor since 2019 to do that, and as mayor, I will implement. On lawlessness, we need to have some rules in our city. And what I, what I mean by that is the violence comes from poverty, and we need to fix the education system in order to really get at the root cause. But safety can't wait for us to solve the root cause. And we need a course correction right now on this feeling of lawlessness. What I would do as mayor uh, and what is part of my public safety plan, I would make a course correction to uh, the executive order on disorderly conduct. The mayor's current executive order directs police to give tickets and not arrest. I think the police should uh, arrest for disorderly conduct, but we should have police training and accountability. Thank you, Rebecca. That's the way I will govern. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Helen, your thoughts. You have two minutes. Oh, yeah. Helen. Sorry. It's I was okay. looking. <laughs> it's <laughs> I was okay. Like, Does it look like Helen? Um, uh, so I think, you know, what I would like to talk about in terms of safety is that it's, it is really about leadership and coordination. Um, Ten years ago, I walked into a school that was probably one of the listed as one of the most violent in the state of Pennsylvania. The children were being hurt, teachers were being assaulted, and families were fleeing. And we, working together with, with smart policies, we turned that school around um, in less than two years uh, by bringing in trauma specialists, retraining teachers, um, and really establishing a culture that a, a system was responsible. When the next mayor has to be, has to be proactive about our about our strategy and that is largely because so many different areas of the city are are beyond the spaces septa is one big transit system our our school district um and you know when kids are let out of school city agencies the police department um state and federal law enforcement need to be coordinated it's not about just convening it's about 
bringing together a mission for how we're going to deliver support and services to communities and families. That includes, uh, inter we talked a lot about young people. So um, I've got 4,000 young people who are at the Juvenile Justice Services Center. Their families are in desperately need of help. Um, every time they exit, they do not get any support. They get a probation officer. So we need to do a whole set of wraparound services for those young people. Um, I've been very clear that when victims um, and any kind of victim of tragedy, including businesses, um, are, are impacted, that the city needs to lean in with a lot more support, whether that's uh, repair funds or other types of things. People really get angry when there's just no response from the city of Philadelphia. And finally, when I talked about a state of emergency, it's not just about me meeting with these agencies to coordinate a response. It's also that police districts at the local level need to meet with communities. It's not just about dashboards and transparency. It's, as, it's about using that data to change the way policing responds Thank you, locally. Helen. Thank you. Derek, you have two minutes. Thank you. Now, when I made my announcement to run for mayor, I did it at a small business. And I did it because small businesses are the anchor of our city, especially here in Santa City. As a small business owner, one of the things you're thinking about every single day, do I keep my hours open to six or five or seven? Because I'm concerned about the gun violence that's happening in our city every single day. That's why I released a public safety plan. I talked earlier about presence, having police officers, having accountability. When I was in the U.S. Attorney's Office, it was someone who unfortunately got caught up in the criminal justice system and they had a gun on them. They knew they did not want to have that gun because if they got arrested, they may get federal time. We don't have accountability currently like we should and working with all of our criminal justice partners to really bring accountability back to the city of Philadelphia. When I talked about opportunity, and that's part of my public safety plan. One of the best ways to reduce crime in the city of Philadelphia and any city is to give someone a job. And the best creators of jobs are small businesses. Having a mayor that understands the issues of meeting a payroll and dealing with the issues of public safety and trying to grow their business while dealing with all these challenges, those are the type of opportunities that we have in the city of Philadelphia. And as a mayor, I'm going to have that as part of my public safety plan. We're going to have the presence, the accountability, the opportunity, and also investing in our city. As a former national president of Democratic municipal officials, I know that we have opportunities to bring in significant dollars into the city of Philadelphia to free up our own capital dollars to make more investments in our city to make our streets safer, cleaner, more lighting, and those are the type of things that we need to do in our city. So if we're going to have a safer city, it's through presence, accountability, opportunity and investment. And that's what I will bring in a green administration because I believe that Philadelphians should expect more and deserve better from our city. And you will get that with Derek Green as mayor. Thank you, Derek. Alan, your thoughts? You have two minutes. Thank you. Um, you know, I think the biggest issue, as I keep repeating, is leadership. And I think the biggest issue after leadership is the violence. And I'll share with you a quick story. Back in 2015, Governor Rendell, uh, who supported me for council, said to me, if you want to be successful, do all the work and give out the credit. Very good advice, very good advice. So in August of 21, I saw what was going on in our city. I saw that some of my council colleagues went to Chester to meet with the people in Chester, PA. I didn't see the police commissioner. I didn't see the DA. I didn't see the mayor's office. I saw it siloed. And so I reached out to the police commissioner and said, can I help you organize public safety meeting of all parties involved. And I, I said, you'll have to help me do this. She said, absolutely, I would love it. I don't want any credit for it, I just want to bring you together. I called uh, the DA, he came. I called the US Attorney, they came. Attorney General sent two people, FBI, ATF, and the courts were a couple of meetings. We had nine meetings, not at City Hall, outside of City Hall, because I didn't want anyone to know that we were doing this, because my goal was to bring them together. Because at the end of the day, that should be our goal, bringing people together to solve this violence issue. And I will tell you that we accomplished a lot. And on day one, I would have a public safety cabinet in the city. I would conduct the meetings myself, It'd be weekly or more than weekly. I don't care if it's an hour, two, or three. There is nothing more important than doing that. But I'll also share to you another important part of being the mayor of the city is to share things that are positive and get the right messaging out. And I will give a lot of credit <clears throat> to the Center City District, but there's 16 other bids across the city who have people out there cleaning the streets every day. That's not my time yet, is it? No, okay. it's not. <laughs> and uh, we'll share with you that in Center City, we have many people who are um, not uniformed, but unarmed on bike patrol, over almost 50 of them. And the crime in 2019 versus 2022 is down 10.8%. Tell everyone that story. Now it's your time. Thank you, Alan. 
Jimmy, you have two minutes. So, in order to combat crime in Philadelphia, and specifically in Center City, you have to have coordination between the mayor's office, the district attorney's office, the police, and the courts. Now, I've been here before. I've done this. When I was supervising judge, for six straight years, before I was super, six straight years, I reduced homicides, uh, led the initiatives from 400 down to 250. And I can do that again. Now, the other aspect is that during that same period of time, Mr. Levy came to me and uh, another judge who I was with at that time, um, uh, Judge Dare, and he, ex he explained to us that there were issues with quality of life as far as it took place in the Center City District, and he wanted to know if I could help him um, change that. So George Ann Dare and myself, we decided that we would start community court, specifically for the downtown businesses, um, to, to make it safer for you to operate. And we, and we opened the first community court. Um, I let George Ann run that court, and it became a very successful court. The same things like this can take place again. All it takes is the leadership that you've been hearing about, and I believe I have that leadership because I'm the only person on this stage that has confronted this issue in the past. So I know exactly how to combat it, and I can do this for you to make sure that you are safe and your business prospers. Thank you, Jimmy. And our final answer for question number three, Jeff Brown, you have two minutes. Th thank you. Um, I think we need more police, about 15, we're short about 1,500 officers, 25% of the force is missing. We have 500 out on workers' comp or heart and lung. I would like to bring them back. We, we have 600 uh, police that are doing civilian work. We could bring back the, the 500 police out on workers' comp on light duty and put them in civilian jobs, or we can hire outside civilian people. Take the 600 that are doing civilian work, put them out on the street where they belong. I think we need a second tier. We're having trouble getting police. Um, it's not an attractive job today. I would like to have a public safety officer with a different criteria so we could get the balance of the police we need quickly, and we will train them so they could ultimately pass the test and become a police officer. That would staff us up much quicker. Um, when it comes to training, we have to balance fairness with safety. And our police, just like I do in my stores, we're in inner city locations, we have to de-escalate problems. Sometimes the police come in too hot. So my goal is to train them to remember they're here to serve our citizens, serve them all fairly, and de-escalate problems. I think that, that can be done. I did it in my stores. We have to focus on mental health and drugs. A lot of the people that are unhoused have, have problems. And our current system to address that, it's not doing anything. It doesn't seem like any problems get resolved. When I was on the convention center board, we used um, behavioral health people or social workers to work with the people living under our tunnels, and we got them into temporary housing and treatment. We need a group of people like that in the city to do the same thing for Center City and all, all the other neighborhoods that are affected with that problem. This is a management problem. I agree with some of my other colleagues. You have to meet with all parts of the criminal justice system, even if you don't agree, to manage this response, and it's a crisis. It has to be done every day until we get this under control. I'm committed to that. Thank you, Jeff. All right, moving on to question number four. Sort of a post-pandemic question, but certainly one very important to the business community in Philadelphia. And Helen, you will have the first response. The Philadelphia Business Journal states that 50 to 60% of offices have employees returning to the office at least two to three times, or at least two to three days a week. They also say a majority of businesses and organizations do not expect remote work to go away completely. We know many city businesses make their living supplying and supporting office workers. So the question is, how will you get larger corporations to seriously think about bringing people back to work in the city at least several days a week. Please limit your answer again to two minutes. 
Helen? Thank you very much. Um, you know, look, I'm going to be very honest. I, I said this before. The most livable, the most desirable city in the future is going to be the most livable city in the future. And I've made clear that, you know, we are in this problem when people do not live in our city. Um, we are fortunate to have a center city area where we have a strong residential base, but we need to expand and continue to grow it. Um, more than ever, I need, their, I need corporations to have their employees want to live in Philadelphia. And that means investing in the things that make Philadelphia great. It means um, m investing in our educational system. It means making sure that our streets are clean and bright and livable. It means that housing is affordable. And it means that safety is paramount, but not just because we're like locking down everything, but because we're actually filling our city with vibrant activity and other types of things that really truly define a safe community. Um, I have taken action on the commuter, uh, on, on helping commuters come back. It's not gonna be a slogan that brings people back in. Um, we passed and worked with, uh, with SEPTA and others um, to introduce a, a what's called an institutional pass program. It, uh, it provides uh, larger employers with an all rail pass for their employees. It helps encourage people to come back. I then later followed it up with a commuter benefits bill that allows uh, for employers to provide up to $600 per person um, for anybody to cover for travel expenses. Um, there needs to be some incentives to come back in. But of course, one of the most important things is going to be the quality of life here in Philadelphia. And that's where, again, the mayor must lead on a coordinated, proactive, not reactive approach towards safety and cleanliness and quality of life in Philadelphia, but a proactive one. In about one month, it's going to hit about 70 degrees. And we all know this in Center City. Young people are going to pour out onto our streets. The next mayor, as mayor, I will lead a strategy to make sure that we're not always surprised every spring day when young people come out, but that Thank we're you, really Ellen. invested in uh, proactive strategy. Thank you very much. Derek, you have two minutes. So what it takes is leadership. Leadership means meeting with our corporate leaders and having an understanding what are the challenges they're dealing with, especially in bringing back uh, their employees to Center City. As we know, if you go from City Hall to about 20th Street, the city is not the same vibrancy that we had before 2019. Some of the retail stores that are on that location have lost business or gone out of business because the foot traffic is not there. The fact that you know, city employers are, city employees have not come back like so many corporate employers have done. I remember talking with Greg Devens in, in June of 2021 and they were trying to bring back employees from Independence Blue Cross. I and my staff, we came back in August of 2021 full day, Monday through Friday, nine to five. That leadership did not come from the city of Philadelphia. To this day, still city employees have still not come back to the city. And I know the challenge that I had as a member of city council trying to provide services and couldn't reach a number of city departments. But I know from a corporate perspective, people have been trying to bring their employees back to the city. And we need a partner from City Hall, from the second floor, who understands those challenges because the wage tax is also an issue. That's another challenge and why people are not coming back because they can get an increase in their salary by staying at home. That's why this past year, during one of the last legislative acts I made as a council member, I reduced the wage taxes to a level that we have not seen in decades because I knew the impact it's going to have on Center City because we've got to bring back people into our office towers and also help the retailers in Center City because we're not getting that partnership from City Hall. But you will get that par partnership going forward with a green administration because I understand the challenges of the small businesses because I've been a small business owner, but also see the fact that you have not had a partner in the second floor, but you will have a partner with Derek Green as mayor. Thank you, Derek. Alan, your thoughts? <clears throat> Thank you, Rick. Uh, look, I would say this. Every entrepreneur and every employer success is the city of Philadelphia's success. And what we're seeing in the center city is similar to what's happening in other cities across the country. From Chestnut Street and South, businesses are booming, doing pretty well. Traffic patterns are almost back to 2019. Where we're getting crushed is from City Hall to 20th Street, the office JFK and um, Market Street. And that's because 40% of our employment Com commutes in from the suburbs and they're not coming in. And you have many offices that aren't occupied. So we have to figure out first, reprogram that ground floor space from, from 20th to City Hall and figure out how we can program things in there that are fun for people to do. People who live in the city to go up to Market Street and for employees to come back in. 
But there's another issue going on in Boston and in other cities, and that is that there is a less of a demand for B and C office space. People want the great space, the A space, but we can't bring people back to the B and C. And we have to revisit this and say, you know what? There may not be enough demand, and we need to convert these buildings to residential in the long term. And we as a city have to be a partner in that conversion, because bringing those people back in means all of our businesses will thrive. There'll be more people here. You'll have people improve the security and safety by having these B and C buildings occupied by residences. The A buildings will do well. But you can walk through any office building right now and see spaces that are totally empty, where people that have two full floors that are 12,000 square feet each and have given up one full floor, and there's no one looking for that space. Again, the A spaces will do well. It's the B and C we need to focus on, and the city needs to be a partner in converting those buildings to residential so we can bring more people back into the city. But the number one issue here is leadership, but the also issue is make sure we program those downtown spaces so they're fun for people to go to. Thank you, Alan. Jimmy, you have so, two minutes. So it's not just downtown Philly. Even the federal government has their employers, employees uh, working from home. But as far as downtown Philadelphia is concerned, it's, it's a two-pronged process. Uh, one part has to deal with, well, it's really three prongs. One part has to deal with the employer. The other part has to deal with um, the government itself, and that comes where they're making Center City safe for people to come to. And then the other part has to deal with the businesses that cater to the employees. So the reality is that all of these um, three aspects have to make Philadelphia a happening, that a place that, that, that people want to come. The employers have to do what's necessary, they have to talk to consultants to see exactly what can they do for their particular business that would make their employees feel good to come back, knowing that the employees are coming back to a safe environment. The other part is that the Chambers of Commerce, we, would, um, we have to work with the Chambers of Commerce to get our businesses humming so that when employees come into Philadelphia, the businesses are there to welcome them with open arms. That they, they'll have various, um, at one time we used to have a lot of uh, street fairs where we used to close down various streets and, 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 and cater to the employees and cater to the businesses. We have to bring things like that back to Philadelphia. Philadelphia has become a, a, a place that people want to come to work and they want to stay after work to enjoy the downtown area. And that all comes with Philadelphia being a safe environment. So by doing what we need to do to keep Philadelphia safe. Thank you, Jimmy. OK. Thank you. Jeff, your thoughts? You have yeah, two minutes. I, I've been doing teletown halls. And I, I've done 100,000 uh, communications uh, with residents. And, and crime's the number one issue. People don't feel safe. Um, we need a visible police presence. We need cameras all over the place so we can catch the roughly 1,700 violent criminals that are terrorizing us. And we need to make the, uh, the SEPTA safe again. It's not safe right now, it's a filthy mess. And so we're, we're going to have to insist that SEPTA step up safety because no one wants that system when, when you're being terrorized on it. And, and other people mentioned it, but I want to be more clear. Fun is a big part of this. It's not just a marketing gimmick. I want to have a commissioner in charge of arts, culture, and fun. And I want to have a calendar of fun things to do to draw people back to our city. And, you know, like I remember pre-pandemic with SIPs. You go down Market Street, there were like 2,000 people outside enjoying themselves. It does work. We need to have more fun things like SIPs and restaurant weeks. And we're going to have to partner with the business community to make it worth people's whiles to come back here. And I do agree with some other colleagues. We should stick with our plan to reduce the wage tax. It's a long-term plan. We could afford to do it if we spread it out over time. And honestly, if you want to keep the stores open, which is partly why people come, you got to stop this shoplifting. As a retailer, the shoplifting's out of control in this city, and we have to enforce the law. Thank you, Jeff. Let's move back to the second row now. David, your thoughts. You have two minutes. Yeah, I think uh, the problem in Philadelphia is uh, with government itself. Uh, government doesn't know its role. It needs to take a step back and support business. 
it is micromanaging and meddling in too many things it has no expertise in. Um, so the first thing I'd say is this, sure, you have to have a city where people want to live in the city, not leave the city, not escape the city, and that's where we are right now. We need people to want to come in here. Why do people come in physically? Because the benefits of being here physically is human contact, engagement, stimulation, collaboration. It has to be pur purposeful. It has to be fun and enriching, but it also has to be profitable. It has to be beneficial. There has to be things for them to do that they can't do outside of the city. And then people will want to come to work and see their colleagues and go, go out afterwards and go to a concert and, and, and go in and get something to eat. We have to do those things. Um, I think that uh, one of the things that, that, that we, we um, have, to, have to deal with in this city is, is the fact that um, for, for us, we, we have to, as a government, look at what are we offering, not only in terms of museum and arts and creative economy, which is fantastic. And let me say, I did a bill to uh, cut the wage tax $100 million. It failed. I did a bill to try to create a, uh, a, 100, um, a $45 million creative arts recovery fund out of $1.2 billion in federal stimulus money. One of the things when we talk about leadership is leadership. We, we do smidgens, we do little things. We need to have bold leadership that is willing to step up and do the type of thing at the size and boldness that is necessary to turn this city around, not cut on the edges, because it won't make a difference. Thank you, David. Sherelle, your thoughts? We need to make Philadelphia a destination city and not a pass through between Washington, D.C. and New York City. And I know I say it sound like a broken record, but you can't do it unless we signal that our city is safe and that it is clean and that people desire to be here. I happen outside of city council, I serve as chair of the Delaware River Port Authority. Um, it manages 900 plus employees and all of the bridges and assets between New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Our bridge toll traffic is coming back and we're almost back to our pre-pandemic levels. And PACO, we've got a little bit more work to do because it's public and mass transit, but we've got to get people to want to be here. We have to recognize that we live in a regional economy. We have to be working with local, state, and federal leaders in all of our regions to address the issues that are stopping people from wanting to be in Philadelphia. And we have to be unapologetic about it. We have to understand that that leadership means we're going to piss some people off when we work hard to make Philadelphia the safest and the cleanest city. But now those folks in Bucks. Chester, Delaware, and Monco, they don't mind sending their children to our educational institutions. Those who work in biotech and life sciences, we're only second to Boston. We're growing. They want to come to Philadelphia now. And if we are thinking about growing our economy and just not how we spend those dollars, we're thinking about how we use scarce resources. Think about the Robin Hood Dell East. Why is it only used seasonally? Is there a way where we we could generate revenue there, grow the economy, but we can't do it, Philadelphia, until we take care of the basics and not give a speech about it. If we Thank say you, lawlessness 10 times, thinking it's going to happen. Thank you. Maria, you have two minutes. Thank you. I was recently talking to a business person who said, we're in a global economy, and we're competing with many different factors now, hybrid working is here is here to stay. What we can't do as a city is ask IBX, Comcast, and others to do what we're not willing to do. We have no policy. The mayor has not set up set a press conference and say, we're open for business. City employees come back to work. We don't have that. So how do we ask the private sector to do what we don't lead on? So we start there. We start with a clean SEPTA system so that people feel safe coming into the city of Philadelphia. And then we look at our amenities, right? Why do people want to be downtown? It's the restaurant scene. It's the cultural scene. Why aren't we promoting some of the things we've done in the past? Free parking on Wednesdays. You know, all the different things that bring people downtown. This is a leadership moment. All of us have to change our lifestyles. People can work from anywhere, right? 
now. The brick and mortar business structure has changed forever. And so the only way we're going to grow our city to 2 million people, which I think we can, is by creating that center city and community-based amenities. People want to come into city for the culture, for the arts, for the restaurant scene. you got to convene those industries. All those industries are struggling, whether you're, you're providing breakfast or lunch or parking initiatives. This, you know, I'm very encouraged by the mayor with the recent um, SEPTA, free SEPTA, because I think it's one of the ways uh, that we go there. But folks... We are competing in a global market in a city that's a day's drive from 75% of the population with an international airport and incredible amenities. We got to get out of the shit city shrug about we can't do better. We can do better. We have everything to offer, but we're not standing forward and saying, this is a great city. This is what you can do in Center City, Philadelphia on any given day. We need a mayor that understands that and appreciates it. Thank you, Maria. And finally, Rebecca, you have two minutes. So to solve the vacancies in the downtown commercial core, uh, I would do several things. First, uh, as mayor, I would require city employees to come back uh, at least two days a week. As city controller, uh, I did that. I required my employees to come back, uh, my 140 employees to come back two days a week. Uh, we do need a citywide policy in order to say to business, we have our employees back, now we need you to come back too. We also need to make sure it's safe. It goes back to safety. I talk to business owner after business owner who says that their employees don't feel safe coming in from the suburbs. So we must have safety. Um, this is about true leadership and having the right person as mayor to navigate issues of business, of crime, of safety, of criminal justice reform, and doing it all at one time. I am the only person on this stage with executive experience in the complex organization that is the city of Philadelphia. Philadelphia has 25,000 employees. It has close to 50 operating departments. <clears throat> and I have experience as chief administrative officer. Uh, I oversaw 10 departments and functions, had 1,000 employees, union and non-union, reporting up to me. I saw the issues. As city controller, I had a union workforce in the city. I can hit the ground running on day one to solve all of these issues and lead and think creativ creatively uh, and truly be the mayor that Philadelphia needs. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. All right, we have just a couple more questions left. Question five has to do with governance. And Sherelle, we'll start with you and then work to your right uh, with this question. Philadelphia does not have ranked choice voting or runoff elections like other large cities do. With so many candidates, there is a good chance the winner in this election could have as little as 25 to 30 percent of the vote. So the question is this, how will you govern all of the people without a majority mandate? You have only 30 seconds to answer this question. Sherelle? I will put my intergovernmental experience at work bringing folks at the federal, state, and local level to secure resources needed and process and protocol changes necessary to improve the quality of life in our city. Um, the first thing you will need to know about governance is a mayor can't do anything alone, and the way to leverage from Harrisburg is not to roll around the floor with a bullhorn. You have to talk to people that you agree to disagree with in order to get something done. Thank you, Sherelle. Maria. Thank you so, so very much. I'm the only person running in, in right now that's been a community activist. I was the CEO at 27 years old, managing a multi-million dollar organization, a founder of a charter school, learned to legislate. But going back to the executive experience, I believe in process. The next mayor, she's going to have to go into neighborhoods and explain how we move this city forward together. The growth and prosperity is both a center city uh, uh, a theme that we have to support support, but Thank also you, leverage that in the communities. Thank you. Rebecca, 30 seconds. I'll be a mayor for all Philadelphians. I will govern for all Philadelphians, even if uh, the percent of the vote isn't 
uh, is less than half, we all have more in common than we have dividing us. And I feel that all the time, going neighborhood to neighborhood, that we are all Philadelphians. We all root for the same sports teams. We all want safety and good schools. And I will work every day to make Philadelphia better for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Helen, 30 seconds. Um, well, I come out of a world where, I, you know, I don't usually come to the table because of titles or power. I usually come because I've built unusual coalitions, because you're leading with big ideas that change the lives of people, and you have a lot of integrity and trust at the end of the day. Um, as mayor, I intend to lead with the same. I think Philadelphians need something to believe in, um, and that's why it's really important that we drive a big vision for the city that's talking about the, the livability of Philadelphia, about making it the best place to raise a family, um, investing in our public schools, you, modernizing Helen. them as well. Derek, your thoughts? So I've been able to work with people from different perspectives and different opinions to get things done. That's how we got this last budget passed, because of that type of leadership. But I've also been a leader of leaders. I was a past president of the Pennsylvania Municipal League, bringing mayors from around the Commonwealth together to address issues that impact each of our cities. I've also been a national president of Democratic municipal officials and served on the executive committee of the National League of Cities in a bipartisan perspective. So I bring that leadership and will govern that way as mayor. Thank you, Derek. Alan, 30 seconds. Uh, thanks, Rick. I will take a page out of Governor Shapiro's book. How, I'm very impressed with what the governor is doing, bringing people together. You know, I've spent 45 years in the private sector, almost two terms on council. I will tell you that government is very different than business, very different. It's not the same. And I have no ego, as, uh, and I will say I'm only focused on one thing, and that is the outcome. I love the city, and all, all I care about is doing whatever is best for all of us in the city of Philadelphia. Thank you, Alan. Jimmy? I will be mayor and govern as if it was a 100% mandate of all the voters. I will make public service announcements for recruiting police, because we need at least 1,500 more of them. I myself would make these public service announcements. I myself would make public service announcements to get more workers into, into our, our, our civil branch. I myself would lead by example up front. Thank you, Jimmy. Jeff, you have 30 Look, seconds. I'd be a mayor for every Philadelphian. Um, in my grocery business, I'm the best listening grocer there is. I go into neighborhoods, people of all different cultures. I listen and I solve problems and I collaborate. I have unions. I figure out how to do it. They didn't all pick me, but I do the job for them. I mean, I think this is about listening. Be the best listener. Address everyone's issues. We're going to be fine. I mean, even in places that have ranked choice voting, you end up with mayors and governors that, that are not what you cho chose. It's the listening later that makes it work. Thank you, Jeff. And finally, David, you have 30 seconds. Um, the problem with politics is it's all about the vote. We have 1.6 million people. About 300,000 Democrats will vote um, in this primary. Maybe 20%. With 20%, you could win and be the mayor. Therefore, I am in this race because I'd like to see us go to the general election on November 7th, and I represent a lot of people, not just those who vote, those who don't vote, who can't vote, who don't even speak English. And I think when you take all the people, you have a common sense and an understanding of where we have to go as a city. Thank you, David. Well, we're supposed to get down to our final question, but it's only 7.15, so I'm gonna sneak in a quick question um, that is off script, and then we'll go to the final question. And, and the, the, the question is this, your opinion about the new Sixers Stadium. Are you for it? Are you against it? Or should the mayor, the next mayor, decide? You'll have 30 seconds. Uh, let's start with, Jeff, why don't you start? You have 30 seconds. Sure. Um, we, we need to do big things to make this city move forward and help our structural poverty. And so a project where the city doesn't invest any money and we get a big new employer is very intriguing. But we have to take into consideration the neighborhood. And, and I think the Sixers need to listen to the concerns of Chinatown and address them. For me to approve it, their concerns would have to be addressed. Thank you, Jeff. Jimmy, your thoughts? 30 seconds? Yes, no, or should the mayor decide? That's what you're looking at there is extreme gentrification. Even though that stadium might be built in, in the year 2030, 2032, what's happening right now is that they have to make the roadway. The roadway that they have to make is what will take out Chinatown. That's why I'm totally against that particular uh, project. Thank you, Jimmy. Alan, same question, 30 seconds. You know, most people in government have a win-lose proposition. 
One side wins, another side loses. I think in Chinatown it could be win-win. I'm in favor of the stadium, providing we satisfy the concerns of Chinatown. But in addition to that, I'm in favor of capping Vine Street from the Ben Franklin Bridge all the way across and recovering that land so Chinatown can bridge the north and south together, which would be a huge win for Chinatown. Huge win. That's why I would be in favor of it. Thank you, Alan. Derek, 30 seconds. Well, I've not made an ultimate decision on this issue because I've talked to people in Chinatown that are vehemently opposed and also I've talked to those who are supportive. But the vast majority of people are in, in the middle. And there's a lot of unanswered questions. As someone who goes up and down Vine Street all the time, how we're going to deal with the current traffic that we have. The discussion has been we're going to make the stadium like MSG, but are we going to really invest in SEPTA to make the transit opportunities possible? How are we growing those opportunities for the small business owners that are there right now? Will they be impacted? So I still have questions before I can make a decision. Thank you, Derek. Helen. Um, those doors that they ever do open won't happen until 2032 at the earliest. And I do not intend to wait for a revitalized Market East that goes from City Hall to the river. It is incredibly important that whatever deal uh, happens for the Sixers is that the city of Philadelphia has to benefit. Small business owners can be subsidized up and down Market Street right now to bring life back to our to our Market Street corridor and make it the vibrant place that it needs to be. And that's, that will be my focus as mayor. Thank you, Helen. David. I have not seen any documentation. I've seen no traffic studies, parking studies. I've seen no architectural design. I've seen no idea about where the money comes from or anything. Unless the Sixers are going to produce some documentation that shows it's what this actually is, what is it exactly? You can't make decisions without any information. So I can't say I'm for or against until I see this paperwork, and I've urged the people in Chinatown to do the same. Get the paperwork, know what they're trying to do, see if it's beneficial or not, and then you can make a decision. Thank you, David. Sherelle, 30 seconds. I have not publicly affirmed whether or not I am for or against. I do know that residents in any neighborhood have a right to have a say in what land use takes place in their community. With that being said, when we are talking about the poorest big city in the nation, before we have an express reflexive opposition, how about we actually know the details about what is being proposed? My convening power as mayor of this city you, would Cheryl. be to bring those industries together. Thank you very much. Maria, 30 seconds. Thank you. This is a perfect example of how you grow a city and how you readdress challenges of the past. Um, I'm very encouraged by today's article where Chinatown is looking at um, creating the connection between the north and the south. I would use that roundhouse property that the city owns to readdress some of the shortcomings that we've done with Chinatown. I understand the community of Chinatown and they should have a voice, but I also understand that we've shortchanged them in the past and they add value. Chinatown adds a day of travel for folks here in the city of Philadelphia. Thank so they're Marie. an economic engine that we should value as part of this process. Thank Thank you. And finally, Rebecca. Any project of this magnitude needs to be seriously considered, in my view. Uh, there will be a tremendous amount of jobs, and uh, obviously there's excitement around the idea of a downtown stadium. With that said, the community needs to feel comfortable. Uh, as so, And obviously right now, there isn't comfort. Uh, so as mayor, what I would do would be to bring the Sixers in, to bring the community leaders in and really understand what the proposal is Thank you, Rebecca. and what the community needs are. Thank you. All right, this will be the final question and Rebecca will start with you and work backwards. Okay. Your final question is this. Name an accomplishment that shows voters you have the stamina, the creativity, the determination and the leadership skills our city requires. Name an accomplishment that shows voters you have the stamina, the creativity, the determination and the leadership skills our city requires. You have 30 seconds to answer. Rebecca. As city controller, not only did I do financial audits, but I took on the city's toughest challenges. I did an investigation into what went wrong in the city's response to the civil unrest. I put that out with recommendations for improvement. I've gotten into some heated arguments with the mayor and others. I stand up for what's right. I will lead that way. Every morning I ask myself what is the right thing to do and that guides me and that's the way I will lead as mayor. Thank you, Rebecca. Maria, 30 seconds. 
through so many things that we've accomplished together uh, in the city of Philadelphia. But I would have to say the stopping of using government as a, of the, as a vehicle to foreclose um, on people's properties based on taxes and water. I introduced income-based payment plans that I don't, not only gave people a pathway to compliance, but saved people's homes, and guess what? Collected more revenue for the city of Philadelphia. Thank you, Maria. Sherelle, 30 seconds. I am not an awesome expert articulator of problems, I am a fixer. Commercial quarters dirty, Sherelle Parker established a solution. PHL TCB taking care of business. We address the issue of grave importance to people in neighborhoods across this city. We stole the idea from the center city district. And every time I see a neon shirt and someone with a trash can, a broom sweeping up trash and cleaning our streets, I say, there's my baby, PHL taking care of business. Thank you, Sherelle. David. Uh, one thing I'm, I'm, I'm proud of is that uh, as a councilman at large, I don't have any resources, so I have to raise my own money. And one of the things I've done is I've gone overseas at my own expense to meet with Samsung Electronics, with uh, uh, SK, with LG, with Hyundai Rotem, with Hyundai Motor Corporation, about establishing jobs in Philadelphia and around the creative arts economy and other things. And I've established a program called PHL Live, which I funded through contributions, which provides a free music platform Thank for you, aspiring David. artists. Helen, 30 seconds. Poverty has been a sin in our city for a really long time, but poverty at this scale is not really just accidental. It's actually really manufactured. And one of the areas that most people live in poverty experience is an eviction. Um, Philadelphia had one of the highest eviction rates in the country, pulled together a diverse coalition of people who delivered smart policies that slashed the evictions by almost two thirds, delivered $250 million in rent assistance to landlords large and small. And this program is now copied in 180 cities across 36 states. Um, Thank it's you, proof Ellen. that we can do great things in Philadelphia. Derek, 30 seconds. So one of the last legislative acts I did was chair the finance committee, which put together the plan which actually passed our budget. We were able to reduce our wage tax and the net income portion of the BERT business income receipt tax to the lowest level we've seen in decades, made additional investments in reference to public safety, and made investment in reference to quality of life issues, but at the same time pushed back against the mayor's 31% real estate tax increase by really increasing the homestead exemption. So pulling all those people together, independent elected officials, to get the job done and pass the budget. Thank you, Derek. Alan? <clears throat> There's a few things. One, the net income was my bill. Number two, I passed the wage tax bill, reimbursing 60,000 families, 200,000 people, a good portion of their wage taxes, $800 on average. Number three, worked on collecting delinquent taxes with our revenue commissioner, collected $120 million between 2015 and 2019, also advised the city to go and get a commercial appraisal firm to reassess the commercial properties that were inaccurate, found another $125 million, and passed the outdoor dining legislation so 862 restaurants could survive during the pandemic. Thank you, Alan. Jimmy. Before I was supervising judge, between 400, 450, 500 people were killed every year in Philadelphia. Once I became supervising judge, I got together with my judges on the criminal side at that time, and we came up with uh, programs that reduce homicide in Philadelphia from that 400 figure down to 250 uh, a year for the next six years while I was supervising judge. Thank you, Jimmy. And our final response tonight, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, 20 years ago, I went to a meeting and learned that people that live a mile apart live 20 years difference in life expectancy because they didn't have access to healthy, affordable food. My entire industry said it's not possible to solve it. Well, I did it. I solved it. I took us from one of the worst food desert cities in the country to one of the best in a relatively short period of time with an all unionized business. And then I worked with the Obamas to do it in the whole country. Thank you, Jeff. How about a big hand for our candidates tonight? Jeff Brown, Jimmy DeLeon, Alan Dom, Derek Green, Helen Kim, David O, Sherelle Parker, Maria Quinonia Sanchez, Rebecca Reinhardt, thank you very much. This concludes our Meet the Mayors Forum. Thank you very much to all of our candidates. Thank you to the Center City Business Association and to Citizens Bank, to WHYY Studios and all of the various partners for tonight's forum. And of course, thank you to the guests in the room tonight. Now we are going to network until 8 o'clock. Drink some wine. I won't because I have to go back to work. <laughs> but for all of us at 6ABC, thank you for having me as your moderator. 
Have a nice evening. God bless. Safe travels. And make sure you vote. <laughs>